Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial, I'll be trying to see how to add file downloads to your Streamlit app, right? So for now, this is a simple workaround that we can use in case you want to add file, file downloads to your Streamlit app. Hopefully in the future, that feature is going to be part of Streamlit core. So let's see what I mean. So in case I pass in something like, hello, this is file downloads, right? I type in this test and I save it. I can be able to download what I tested there, right? What I typed there in this particular option. So if I click on this, now it's going to download it as a TST file with the timestamp on it. Then if I open it, you can see that we have this hello, this is file downloads written here, right? So that's what we're trying to see how to add that to our streamlit app. Again, if I go back to the CSV file, CSV, in case I have a CSV file like this iris data set and I want to download it, I can also click on the download here, then I'll be able to download it as a CSV, right? So I can actually open this one as a CSV file with all the various details on it. So let's see how to add this simple feature to our Streamlit app. So I'll go back again to my app. So I'll start everything from scratch, then you work on it. So I'm going to make a folder. I'm going to call it as my file downloads app, right? And I'm moving to my file downloads app. There's nothing here, so I'm going to create a simple file called app.py. Then I'll use Sublime Test to open this particular file. So we are trying to build something very simple with the concept of file downloads. So this idea is not for me. It has been on the Streamlit discussion forum for quite a long time. So we're trying to see how to use this particular code, right, in our app. So let's start. So I'm going to import and make it bigger. So let me import Streamlit as ST, then I'll be importing Streamlit dot component as STC, right? We may not use it, but we may use it, but let's import it. Then I'm just going to import some basic stuff. So this is going to be my main app as we always do, which is going to go with my menu, which in this case is going to have just the home, the CSV, and then about, right? These are not important. Let's create a simple choice. It's going to be st.sidebar.select box. I don't know whether the audio is okay. It has been a quite a long time I made videos because I was not feeling well. Okay, so let's move on. Perfect. So if the choice is to go to home, I want you to do something. So let's call this one as my st dot subheader. Then this is going to be my home, right? So what you want to do is that you want to type in something, then we'll be able to see that thing we have typed and then download it. So let's call it as my test. It's going to be st dot test area. Then let's call it as I say your message, the message that you want to type there. So the button if st dot button let's say save then st dot write that particular test day my test right if that's something very simple now let's go on <coughs> apologies for that else if the choice is go to csv we also work on the csv aspect so pass then else st dot subheader for the about right something very simple let's close our app with the if main and then let's run this app so I'll go back to my workspace then stream let's run app.py so whilst the app is opening what you'll be doing is that you'll be importing some things to help us with that so let's work on the CS on the TSD file right in case you want to be able to file download your TSV so the requirement is that it is going to be our details we need to import b64 that's the most important thing that you need to be able to help us with that. Then I also want to add timestamp to it, so time. So these are the two main things that we need. Then we can create a simple function to help us with that. So we'll be using two methods. So the first one is going to be the function. The next one is going to be a class approach, right? So let's go with the first one with the function. So I'm going to write a simple function to help us download our file, which in that case, I'll call it as my dev test downloader. Then I'm going to pass in my raw test, right? The test that the person supplies. Then I'm going to convert it to B64 to help us with that. So B B64. Then use the B64 encoder 
to B64 encode it. B64 encode. This is where all the magic lies, right? I'm going to pass in my raw test. Perfect. Then I'll decode, I will encode it. Then decode the entire stuff. So, so this is where all the magic lies, right? The magic lies here, right? Perfect. So let's save it. Let's see what is opening. That is opening on this spot. So I'll copy this link. Then I'll paste it here. It's already there. Let's go with always run. Perfect app is working. So if I paste in, let's close off this. And if I type in, say, Hel hello, streamlet love is right so if i click on this i'm going to bring the test here right hello stream little love is so that our app is working perfectly well so what i will do is that i will position it beside it right so i position it beside it so that anytime i type something it is shown here right wow so save it's going to show hello stream light love is wow right very nice so we want to be able to save this particular test that we typed here and download it so how do we do that so i just come back again and let's add some timestamp to it so let's go this let's pick this one here so this is a simple stuff to add timestamp to our file right perfect then i'll come down here then from here i'm going to create a new file name then this is the new file name let's give it as let's say let's call that let's say new or oh, new file right or well, let's go the new test file then i'm just going to go with the timestamp it's always advisable to add a timestamp to it tst Right, a perfect dot format. Now pass in my timestamp. Perfect. So that is something very simple that you have done here, right? To just create a new file name to allow us to be able to get it. Then I'll just go with st.markdown. Then I'll pass in my markdown option here. So let's call it, let's say, download file, right? Something like that. Something very simple. Then the next option is that I'll be using, I'll create an href, then I'll use this option. So a ref, right? There's a link I'm creating so that I'll pass in this base 64 encoding over the wire to be able to allow it to make it downloadable. So this is going to be data, right? Then the data is going to take in the file option, then the particular extension. So the extension I'm using is TST extension because I want to save TST file. Then I'll pass in my base 64. Then I'll pass in the 64. So this is B64. So this B64 is the encoding. So this is where the data is coming from, right? So this data is going to be passed here. That is the simplest method behind it. So let's make it like this. Perfect. Perfect. So to be able to get the file itself by the file name, I'm just going to download. And I'll pass in the file name here. Let's take off this. So I'll pass in this new file name. Perfect. Then I'll close it. So let's go just say click me. Something like that. Or click here or whatever the name is. Click here. Then I'll close the eref, right? So this is a simple link. We are using an href. We are passing in the data as a file, right? Very important and extension and b64 that's a particular type of encoding then we are passing in the file that we encoded we encoded here perfect then you are specifying that give it this particular file name otherwise it's going to use the default file name but we want to use the name that we are creating here right with a timestamp then download now let's return this particular stuff so st.markdown and i pass in my href that i created then I'll specify that on save, allow HTML. You can also use the HTML from component, but I prefer the markdown. Then I'll specify this one to be true. So let's save it. So let's try this function first before we explain it again. So the basic idea behind what you are doing is that you are, whatever the person supplies will be passed as raw test. Then you're going to be using base64 encoder to encode the entire stuff, right? Then you are creating another file name with a timestamp. Then you are passing it over this link here, right? Very simple. So let's go back and try it. I come down to this particular place. Then I'll just go with my test downloader. I'll pass in my test. So let's save it. 
go back again let me let's save it again yeah, perfect so now it is giving it here right very nice but there is a mistake the reason it's not showing is that you need to be able to use markdown to specify that i want to show this particular one so that i can be able to download it so i'll come back again and now fix that issue here so the error is that we forgot this question this here right so that is the basic understanding so if i go back and i check it out let's save it again period it's working right? so that is how to add a file downloads to it right so the basic idea is that you have to make sure that this is the right format right this is one and then the download is also one right so this file name is going to be coming from here so i click on it and now it's giving us the new test file name which is the new test file name with the time stamp so that is how to add test how to add file downloads to your streamlit app very simple and see that everything is there perfect so you have seen how to do that now let's see how to work with csv file right test file you have seen so let's go to the csv file so i'm going to be using pandas to read the file so pd.read underscore csv my iris.csv file so let's import pandas from above the same idea so we'll be importing pandas import pandas as pd right perfect so in case i want to let's go back to that side and i have my csv if i want to read it right so the file is not found so let's fix that file so i'll just go back again then now copy this file here so i'll paste it here right so i'm pasting it here so that we have it in the same location and now let's run it again so if i save it in case i want to see it so st.data frame and i'll pass in my df right so if i save it now our file is going to be shown here as you can see right everything is being shown here right perfect so how do you download this one so you can also apply the same function with it the same test downloader function on it and it's still going to work in two ways so let's check the simplest way i'll just go back again and now copy this and test stuff now change this one from csv test to csv so what i need to do that i have just going to take in the data that the person supplies which is coming as a data frame right then i'm going to call this one as let's say csv file then data dot two csv i'm using pandas itself to help us with that right then i'll pass in my csv file here csv file that is all right that is all that we need you have to change the extension and then change this one to that is all so this is the basic understanding so we are doing the same thing we did above here but this time we are converting the file to csv here right the data that is being supplied as csv then we are passing it back perfect right we change the extension here then we change the extension here so let's save it and come down to here and let me add it so i can just go back again and call the csv downloader now pass in my df if i save it and i come back to the app so now it is here so i can download it so we have our file as a csv right so i can, I can actually open this particular file as a csv so that's the basic way you can add file uploads to your file downloads to your streamlet app so the basic understanding is that you just need to use basis different encoding to encode your txt file or your csv file then you just pass it over the wire using this particular command right very simple these are functions you can actually convert the entire stuff into a class and use it over and over again so let's try that one out so I'll copy the code because it's still the same thing so that's to save us time let me not copy it let's write the code itself so class I'll cut as my file downloader right perfect and this is a simple class you have created so this is how it's going to be so it's going to be going with this option this is going to be our example we're going to create an instance of it called download file downloader right then it's going to take the data right that you want to have then the file name then it's going to take the file extension something like that so that's the basic understanding then in case i want to download just go with a function called download so this is a reasonable class we can create to help us with that so i'll just change this one from here to let's call it as my data right data right perfect 
the next one is going to be self dot the file name that I want to give to it. File name. Next one is going to be self dot extension. So file extension. So let's add that particular class here. So this is going to be my file name. Let's give it like let's say my file. This can be none, but let's go as my file. Then this is going to be that is the default one. Then file extension. Let's give it as TST as default, right? Very simple. So this is all that we need, right? Now let's add this particular function. So what to be doing that I just copy this same function that we had here. This function is the same function that is in here, just to make our work easy. So let's call this one as downloader or download rather right so it's going to take self not raw test then when it takes itself self dot data right perfect so that is the basic understanding then the file name this file name we are having we will be using the file name that is coming from here so i'll just take off this we don't need this one again so what we doing that we are taking the file name and then the extension so we take the file name so self dot file name right that the person supplies then we also need the file extension let's go with the timestamp first then the file extension so self dot file extension okay, so this one goes off so that is something very simple so this is going to automatically give us a file name together with the timestamp then that is all so i'll change this one from here to the file extension it's going to be my self dot file extension Perfect. that is all so this is a simple code so the same thing we did above now we have converted it into a class a simple class right so the class is going to take in the data then it's going to take in the file name and the file extension right then it is also going to take in a time string or timestamp option here which is going to be used to create a new file name whatever data is being supplied we are encoding it here then you are passing it over the wire in this particular option right that is the basic understanding behind what you have done so far so let's try this simple function here i'll go back and comment this one out then let's go with my download so file downloader so this is going to take in the data so my test right then if i just go with dot download because it's taking apologies for the nice right so perfect so this is the new one so i just call this dot download then if i click on it let's see perfect it's working right it seems it's working so this function is actually working as expected this is from the old one <laughs> that's why i said it's working it's actually not working let's go back to the csv from the csv to the home making sure that it's working so i'll type in something new so this is from a class click on the save perfect it's coming right so download file perfect let's open it and see this is from a class right so that means that everything is working as expected so that is a basic understanding so this same function that you have created or this class can also be applied for the csv by going back to the same thing that we did here so let me comment this one out and just go with my download right then the file downloader but this time i'm going to go with my df.2 csv it's a function so i convert it there then download so that is the simplest way right so the same class is being used for all of these things if i go back to the csv session and i click on download it's working right my file right it's now this now is in tst you have to make sure that we change it from this to the file extension so because we made it a class it's quite easy for us to manipulate for extension csv let's save it go back again this was tst now let's run it again this is csv right everything is working as expected so thank you for watching this tutorial and see in the next session so the basic idea is that we just use b64 to help us with our stuff we encoded them we passed them over the wire see you in the next session stay blessed and thank everybody for this code stay blessed bye